Okay, uh, good morning. Welcome to this 18th uh, Congress of Automatic uh, Control, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, today it is the closing day, so we have uh, five presentations. The first presentation is uh, by Haciel Hernandez yeah. and Ivan Padilla Cantoya uh, from Universidad de Guadalajara. Uh, so, uh, Haciel, are you ready to present? Uh, Haciel, are you ready to present? Yes, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. We'll listen to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much to all the attendees. Uh, uh, allow me to present myself. My name is Jaciel Hernandez Trujillo. Uh, Ivan and Dr. Ivan Padilla and I are so proud to present our work, High Transconductance Gain, Low Voltage uh, Class AB, uh, Class AB OTA. Uh, well, the downscale, downscaling process of the transistor affects the intrinsic gain of the devices themselves, but the demand, the current demand also requires that the circuits perform their task quickly, that they have long input uh, uh, swings and high linearity at the output. Uh, um, fortunately for us, uh, analog designers, we have a, um, a circuit building block that it's widely used in analog and mixed signal design. And that circuit block, it's called the Operational Transconductors Amplifier, also known as OTA. And this uh, circuit acts as a landmark in countless systems, uh, uh, top-notch uh, systems nowadays, thanks to its amazing performance. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, not all OTAs uh, can solve every problem we have in the industry. Uh, so current technologies need uh, require class AB amplifiers. Uh, in other words, uh, current flowing in bidirection, bidirectional ways and that the OTA can respond with high linearity and that uh, has a low power consumption. So the work that Dr. I Ivan Padilla and myself are uh, proposing is an uh, OTA with uh, class AB output. Okay, first uh, I'm, let's talk a little bit about the fleet voltage follower cell. Uh, uh, well, uh, it consists of two transistors and uh, a biasing current source. Uh, what's the advantages that these cells, these cells has? Well, uh, thanks to this uh, local uh, feedback between uh, the gate of M1 and M2, uh, M1 can um, adjust it its uh, voltage uh, source to gate to source voltage and therefore it can uh, sink large currents. So also this cell has a very low output uh, resistance characteristic. It, it's about one over one divided by GM, one GM2 RO2. Uh, this cell is widely used in differential, differential pairs and current mirrors uh, and in the construction for uh, operational transconductance amplifiers. But it also has his uh, negative uh, points, his, uh, its, its disadvantages. Uh, the current sourcing capability of this cell is limited to the bias current IB. 
and it also has a, a limited output swing. Uh, and this uh, cell also behaves as a uh, class A amplifier, so it doesn't serve uh, our purpose. Uh, now let's uh, let's see the uh, OTA based on the flip uh, voltage follower. It's this one, and uh, we can see we have the BGS two for transistor M two. It allows him to um, sync uh, current uh, IB. We have uh, the uh, transistor M4 with its BGS4. It allows him to sync current IB. Uh, oh, uh, the voltage, the differential uh, input voltages BI minus and BI plus are reflected at nodes A and node B. These two voltages across resistor R create a, a current in this resistor. Uh, now, M1 uh, can sync a, a current that we call ID1, and uh, M1 and M5 are connected as current mirrors. So this uh, current is copied to this branch M6 is just cascading this same current. So we can, um, M6 and M8 are connected also as current mirrors. So this uh, current we called ID1 is also copied to this branch. Okay, now let's go to this part. We also have BGS3 here for transistor MT, M3. And we have uh, the current we call ID3. M3 is connected as um, with M7 as current mirror. So this uh, current is copied to this branch, ID3. And at the output, we have IO. It's the, um, if we do a KCL at this node, we have IO. IO is equals to ID1 minus ID3. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the uh, analysis by inspection of the circuit where we can see all the, uh, when we do the KCLs and with a little bit of algebra and substitution, uh, we can obtain the, uh, the transconductance gain of the, of the circuit that is this one. Uh, it's uh, transconductance gains is 2 over R. So we can see that um, the advantages of this uh, type of OTA is that it's highly linear. Why? Because it's, it only depends on the value of R. Okay? So the fabrication process does not affect the transconductance gain. But like we said, it's a class A amplifier and it has a limited input swing. Okay, now let's go to the important uh, part. Uh, the flip voltage follower uh, class AB. This is the type of, uh, of cell that we are going to use for uh, the construction of our OTA. Uh, this one consists of three transistors. Now we have transistor M3. Uh, it also has the same bias current and it, we also add a resistor that we call AirBat. Uh, and this AirBat serves, uh, is included to induce a voltage uh, to a voltage between the gates of M1 and the gate of M3, according to this expression that we can see here. Uh, so that they can be saturated. Uh, okay, we can see that also uh, M1 has a um, has a shunt feedback in this 
in this part. Yeah. So what are the advantages? It has a very low output resistance, the same as the previous uh, FPF uh, cell. We can see the voltages there. Current 91. Yeah, we have the same uh, output resistance. Okay, and we have these currents flowing to the, through the circuit. Uh, so M3 in this case uh, serves the purpose to provide large current need, large currents if needed. And um, M2, we can see that M2 and RBAT use the same power supply and the same biasing current as the conventional FBF that we saw before. So we don't need additional power. That's a great advantage. Okay, now we go to the OTA based on the FB and the flip voltage follower class AB. We can see on this on this uh, on this picture we have two FBF uh, AB cells here that shape the the core of the circuit. Okay, now we're going to see how the currents behave in this in this case. We are, we have our differential inputs. Okay, we have current IB flowing through the circuit. The differential uh, inputs are reflected at nodes A and node B, the same as before. These uh, voltages BA and BB create uh, a current across resistor R. BGS, B, B, BSG3, currents ID3, ESG6, ID6. We also have this, now we have this uh, current flowing through M1 and it's copied to this branch to M7. This M8 is cast code in the current. So M8 and M10 is are connected as uh, current mirrors. So we can see the ID1 is copied to this branch, ID1. We also have ID4 flowing through M4. This, uh, this current is copied through to this branch, ID4. And so we have our um, current at the output, that is the KCL at the, at the output node. We also have the uh, analysis by inspection of the circuit uh, where we obtain these equations with a little bit of algebra and substitution. Uh, we can obtain the transconductance gain of the OTA and we can see it's the same as, uh, as the previous circuit. So that's a very important uh, uh, that's a, a pro for this circuit because mm -hmm. it also depends on the value of R. It's, uh, that's so, the uh, sorry for interrupting, but you have two minutes left to finish. Okay, thank you. So yeah, uh, it's impervious to, to the fabrication process and other side effects. So well, uh, here's the simulation data that we use a Cadence Virtuoso software for the simulation. Uh, we have all the data, the most important uh, parameters for in uh, 180 uh, nanometers technology. Okay, we perform uh, the DC test for the OTA. Uh, the optimal value for our purpose was one kilo ohm, so we fixed uh, the R value. Uh, one kilo ohm for the remainder of this uh, research project. We also have the AC test. These are the um, AC parameters 
the most important, the bandwidth, the gain bandwidth, the phase margin, DC gain, okay? Uh, the transient analysis with the proper uh, uh, slew rates that we obtain, the positive one and the negative one. And also we have here a table with the most important uh, parameters for the OTA FBFAB that we used. And well, the final remarks that we have, it's, well, it's, this is a pro, this proposed uh, circuit was a variant of the conventional OTA FFB, and the class AB operation is achieved thanks to the FBF cells embedded in the circuit. It was biased with a low power supply. It demands a few non, few transistors, and it also has a highly linear response. Uh, this topology can be used in the future for uh, high performance applications in analog design. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's it. So, questions? I think it's time for questions, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Hasiel, for your participation. Uh, so, do we have questions for the participants? Yeah, uh, we have uh, Alfredo Reyes. Okay. Uh, we can hear you, uh, Dr. Alfredo. Maybe you can write your speaker. Yeah, um, maybe uh, you can put your question in the chat uh, so we can read it because we can hear you. Uh, in the middle, uh, we have any more questions? Okay, I think the question is in the chat. Has it? Can you go to the slide before you are presenting your proposal, please? Okay. Uh, this one? Alfredo? Or this one? That one? Okay, perfect. Uh, so, Hasiel, Alfredo Reyes is uh, telling you if you can uh, highlight the advantage of this proposal. Ah, okay. 
Yeah, uh, so we can see here that if you have, um, for example, if VBAT, we make it zero, we only have two gate to source voltages, BSG3 and BGS1. So this cell, it's, it's amazing, it's really appropriate for uh, low voltage environments. So that's one of the, the main advantages. We also have that um, M3, we have an extra uh, transistor for this cell. Uh, and M3 can provide uh, current if needed. So in the previous case, we didn't have this, this advantage that the, it was a, another transistor that could provide uh, uh, large currents. So these are the main advantages. And also it has the same low output resistance as the conventional FPF. Uh, so yeah, that those are the main advantages. You don't need any additional power to, to bias this cell. Uh, the bias voltage uh, we use in the simulations, uh, we use uh, 1.4 volts uh, as, as bias volts. And it's the, uh, I was saying that independent from the technology, uh, I was talking about the transconductance gain because uh, as you uh, we, we were able to see that uh, the transconductance gain was only two over two divided by R. So it only depends on the value of the middle resistor R. So it doesn't get affected by other uh, variables, by other side effects. Okay. Uh, thank you for your participation, Hasiel. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is uh, that it? Yeah. Okay. We will continue What's... with the program uh, with the participation of Jesus Jimenez Leon, Arturo Sarmiento Reyes, and Pedro Rosales Quintero uh, with the work a two-level modeling methodology for MEM-resist devices. Yes, thank uh, you very much. Can you thank hear me? Thank you, Jesus. Go. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jesus Jimenez Leon, and I am very thankful of being here in the 18th International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Computer Science, an automatic control to present our work entitled uh, Two-Level Modeling Methodology for memory step Devices. This presentation will begin with a brief introduction about the scope of our work. Next, we present the finite element and compact modeling of a memory step device. A comparison of the results is then presented and finally some conclusions are drawn. The current tendency of the transistor shrinking is reaching a physical limit. Due to its dimensions, as small as 7 nanometers, several disadvantages are present in recent technology nodes. This scaling also affects other important circuits, that is the case of memory cells, such as DRAMs. Hence, new concepts of integrated circuit design are currently emerging. Among them are the beyond CMOS devices, which intends to overcome these limitations by exploring the functionality of novel devices that serve to improve system performance and enable new memory and computing paradigms. Among a number of beyond CMOS devices, resistive random access memories or resistive RAM 
have been identified as an adequate option to overcome the RAM limitations due to scaling. Resistive RAMs are devices with a capacitor-like structure which present resistive switching phenomena. The need for resistive RAM models is evident in order to gradually develop a better performance of the devices. Three different levels of abstraction are distinguished in resistive RAM modeling, going from ab initial simulation in the lowest level through compact models in the top level. As the model scale um, becomes smaller, the mathematical complexity, physical detail, and computational cost increases. Our work is located here, between the device level and the circuit level. On one side, physics-based models provide detailed information of the internal processes of the device, but with a high computational cost. On the other side, compact models are generally computationally efficient, since these are described by simplified assumptions of the physical internal phenomena of the device. The trade-off between physical detail and computational cost creates a gap when physical and electric descriptions are approached. Our work intends to bridge this gap by presenting a methodology that allows to find compact models directly from finite element simulation results. As mentioned before, finite element models allows to simulate in detail the internal processes at the device level. It takes into account the dimension of the different parts and regions as well as the characteristics of the materials. Hence, is capable to provide the electrical characteristics of the device. Nevertheless, these models are generally computationally expensive since they are described by, by a set of partial differential equations that has to be solved numerically. To describe the physical mechanisms of a resistive switching device, a set of coupled partial differential equations are established, namely the Poisson equation, the heat equation, and the continuity equation. The geometry of a typical MIMO structure includes the description of an insulated region between top and bottom metallic electrodes, where these equations are numerically solved. The solution of the system equations gives the behavior of the internal electric potential, the temperature, and the charge carrier density shown in this figure. Each of these curves are a solution of the system when a voltage sweep is applied to the top electrode. For each applied voltage, a distribution of the internal electric potential is solved as also a distribution of the temperature and charge carrier density. By taking into account the dimensions of the geometry and the characteristics of the materials, namely a given electric and thermal conductivity, it is possible to obtain the electrical characteristics of the finite element simulated device. Um, as shown, as we shown in the figure, the voltage and the current and the resistance can be obtained. And these are corresponding to two cases of the G rate, namely K equals 10 in the blue line and K equals 20 in the green line. The impressive behavior of the finite element simulated device is confirmed by the parametric curves, resistance versus voltage and resistor versus current, where two resistance states can be noticed. And also the current voltage series loop, which is a fingerprint of the membership systems. Compact models, unlike finite element models, are generally described in a phenomenological manner. And usually it serves to include resistant RAM as an element of a system. They have some advantages, such as being computationally affordable and allowing to use the model 
to demonstrate some of the RAM storage and computing applications. Nevertheless, compact models generally have low physical detail. To develop a compact model of a membristive device, we have to know what a membristor is. The definition of a membristive system is given by Chua and Kang as equations 4 and 5, namely a state equation that depends on the input u, the time t, and the state itself x, and the port equation that relates the output to the input by a state-dependent function g, and that has a particularity of the output being zero whenever the input is zero. For example, equation six shows the port equation of a resist of a current control membristor in which the output voltage is given by the product of the input current and the state dependent resistance. In this work, a QFV modeling approach is proposed in order to obtain a compact model that allows to emulate the electrical behavior of the finite element simulated device. To do this, we apply the definition of the net variables of the membristor, namely flux and charge, as the time integral of voltage and current of the device, respectively, as shown in equations 7 and 8. Once the charge and flux variables have been calculated, they are used to construct a QP map in which the characteristics of the membristor are plotted. Two curves are shown in this figure corresponding to the cases k equals 10 in blue and k equals 20 in green mentioned before. A cure fitting is performed in order to obtain an analytic approximation to the finite element simulated q curves. The result of both curves fitting are given in equations 9 and 10, being both exponential expressions. The conductance of the device is obtained by taking the derivative of the cubic curve and it is given in equation 11. The membristance is given by the inverse conductance as equation 12. The membristance, also known as the state-dependent resistance, is then equated to the Strykov expression, which is a classical form to describe, describe switching resistance in membristive devices. Then by solving for x and taking the first derivative, an expression for the state equation is given as the equation 13. In the same way, the port equation can be expressed as equation 14. The circuit level implementation is carried out by giving an equivalent macro model of the state and port equations. In the SPICE macro model, first the flux variable is obtained by solving the parallel connection of the behavioral current of the behavioral current source G flux and the capacitor C flux. The solution of the node equation is equivalent to perform the integration of the device voltage. In a similar manner, the state equation is solved in node X by using the corresponding values of G state behavioral source and the C state capacitor to establish an equivalent state equation. In the port of the macro model, the port equation is described by a behavioral voltage source, EMEM, and a serial resistor. A comparison of the electrical simulation results is shown in this figure, where the solid line corresponds to the finite element results and the dashed line corresponds to the compact model results. It can be noticed that the great agreement is reached between both results. Additionally, the membristive curves obtained from both models, compact and finite element, also show great agreement, meaning that the membristive behavior of the finite element simulated device has been successfully reproduced by using the proposed methodology. As a quantitative measure of similarity between the results of finite element and compact model, the absolute percentage error is computed. 
This behavior of merit calculates the error point to point between both resulting curves using equation 15, where E data corresponds to finite element model results and M data corresponds to the compact model results. The error calculations show a maximum error of 0.51% for the case k equals 10 and 1.88% for the case k equals 20 when the simulated resistance of finite element and compact models is compared. As a conclusion, a two-level modeling methodology for membership device has been presented. In the first level of modeling, we have presented a physics-based model uh, that describes the internal formation dissolution process of the resistive switching device. It is obtained by solving a couple of systems of partial differential equations by using finite element method. And it gives the behavior of the internal electric potential, charge, current density, and temperature. In the second level of modeling, it consists of a behavioral compact model that emulates the electrical results of its, finite, of its physical finite element counterpart and the membership characteristics of the device. This modeling methodology consists by determining the, cons determining the constitutive q phi membership relation, and it is coded in a SPICE macro model suitable for electric simulation. It provides a suitable and efficient representation of the device to be used in circuit simulation frameworks. The presented modeling methodology bridges the gap between the physical description and the electric description of the device, fact that can be useful for device and circuit designers. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Jesus. Uh, so we go with the question of the participants. Is there any question? If there is any question for Jesus. Okay, I, I think there there is no question. Uh, okay. So, uh, Jesus, if you want to comment uh, 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 more about your work. Mm, okay, maybe something quickly that this is, um, oh, we intend to, with this work, we intend to close the gap between two types nice. of modeling. Nice. Uh, on one hand, the finite element model that allows to represent the internal physical phenomena in devices, specifically uh, in this case, membership devices or resistive switching devices. And uh, sometimes uh, this type of models is hard to implement or to use in an electric in electrical simulation and that's why we present this methodology to obtain all the electrical characteristics of this fem part 
to simplify it and to be able to use in this type of electrical simulations. Okay, I think that it's a very interesting uh, work because uh, we are allowed to simulate this kind of uh, device. Yes. So it's it's very useful. Please Thank you very you. much, Jesus. Um, so we're, we're going to, to start with the next presentation. Its title is Micromotor uh, Unit Based on CMOS MEMS Technology Integrated on a Single Chip. Uh, it is going to be presented by Andrea Lopez Tapia. So, Andrea, uh, be welcome. Thank um, you. So, we can listen to you very well. So, uh, you can start. Okay. Uh, you can see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, I will start. Good morning, my name is Andrea Lopez Tapia and today I will present my work titled Micromotors Unit Based on CMOS MEMS technology integrated on a single chip. And this is the content of my presentation and I will start with the overall objective. The overall objective is to present the design for MEMS linear and rotary micromotors, including their respective control circuits, elevation voltage stage, and sensors all together in a single chip. They were designed under the rules of the standard 0.5 micron CMOS technology of on semiconductor. And I will give you an introduction. The area of micro machining has made progress thanks to the improvement of technology and research. Due to these developments, it is possible to design devices that are more complex and some works discuss the design of the mechanical structure of micromotors using CMOS technology or dedicated technologies for MEMS, such as MEMSCAP. However, the micromotor, the control circuit and sensors are not integrated within the same chip. So this is the novelty of this work. And now I will talk about the micromotor MEMS and uh, the driving forces of micromotors that generate a uh, movement and uh, are essentially of electrostatic nature. The tangential force uh, generated in parallel pairs of misaligned and electrically energized plates provides the movement required in a movement in a micromotor. And the first uh, figure exemplifies the operating principle of a linear micromotor in which there is a movement between two sets of parallel plates, the moving set and the fixed set uh, that are out of phase. An electrostatic force appears when a potential difference is applied between both electrodes, in this case A and A prime. And this phenomenon uh, moves the motor one step horizontally and it is repeated sequentially for the next pair of electrodes, in this case, V and V prime, and then C and C prime. In this way, the motor moves gradually until reaching the final position. On the other hand, the second figure shows um, a schematic of a rotary micromotor in an alternating sequence, a potential difference is applied to the starter poles, these ones, and uh, so an electrostatic force is generated between the starter poles and the rotor, which causes a rotor movement of one step. Uh, repeating this process in an appropriate sequence and periodically, the rotor can rotate at a certain speed in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. 
And then I will speak about the design of both micro motors. And it was taken into consideration that there are three metal, as we can see in this figure, three metal layers and two polysilicon silicon layers of different thicknesses available in on semiconductor 0.5 micron CMOS technology. All the layers are separated by uh, silicon oxide and they can be electrically connected through metal contacts. The components of both micro motors are those uh, shown in the diagram. Uh, an oscillator uh, as the sequential circuit for both micro motors, the elevation voltage, the mechanical structure and the sensor. Now, uh, the design of the linear micromotor. A special feature of this uh, micromotor is the use of springs as a support of the mobile electrodes, which is not common in this type of devices. Uh, these springs will be the support of the arrangement of capacity plates and their guide in the moving axis. Another function is to avoid uh, the friction between the moving part and the lower layers. And um, it was calculated the electrostatic force required to move the springs. Um, and then the, the voltage to obtain this force that results in 16 volts and the layer in which the springs and the actuator will be manufactured is metal one. Um, and if GMOS, it means a floating gate MOS transistor, is used as a position sensor of the micro motor. And the IFG MOS correlates the position of the moving set electrodes with the current delivered by the, by the transistor. So it is added, added a movable control gate, this one in blue. And uh, this change allows uh, the variation of overlap with the floating gate, this one in red. And when the micro motor is displaced uh, by applying an electrostatic force due to the interaction between the electrodes, the area of overlap between the control gate and the floating gate uh, varies, as we can see in, the, in this figure. And as a result, the capacitance formed by the control gate and the floating gate varies, producing a change uh, in the drain current. And it was chosen to place the control gate and the moving part in the same layer in metal one, as we can see here in blue, this one in blue, and the floating gate in poly one, just below the control gate. And now I will see the mechanical structure of the rotary micro motor. Um, the design of the structure was made with the following layers. The rotor was manufactured with using metal one and metal two layers, as we can see in the figure. And the stator is built in using metal one, metal two and poly two layers and the layers used in the stator and rotor structures are joined by means of metal contacts. And uh, the shaft cap of the micro motor is constructed using the metal tree layer. Uh, also in this case, a floating gate MOS transistor is used to estimate the turning speed of rotary micro motor. And uh, the speed sensor is constructed in such a way that the control gate, this one in blue, is attached to the rotor uh, structure, this, this one in gray, and the floating gate is just below the control gate, this is, is the, this one in, in red, and when the rotor rotates, rotates, there are periodic variations in the transistor current that allow to obtain the rotation speed. Now uh, I will show the control circuit 
And uh, the first element of the control circuit is an oscillator based on a Schmidt trigger inverter. Both uh, resistor and capacitor are external devices of the chip whose values determine the frequency of the oscillator. And the oscillator is used as a clock signal of, um, of both sequential circuits based on D-type flip-flops, one for linear, linear and the other for the rotary micromotor. And this circuit generates the signals or phases that indicates um, the order of excitation of the fixed electrodes in the linear or rotary micromotor. In this case, we can see this figure is the rotor is for the rotary micromotor. These phases are initialized with the clear signal, and the X signal selects the di direction of the um, of movement of the motor back or forward for the linear micromotor and clockwise or counterclockwise for the rotary micromotor. Um, the signals for the control gate for the control circuits range uh, from zero to five volts. These voltages are not capable of driving the micro the micro motors and uh, to generate the electrostatic force necessary to drive the linear or rotary micro motor. 16 and 18 volts are needed respectively. In order to use uh, these voltages in on semiconductor 0.5 micron CMOS technology. An extended drain MOS transistor is needed, and um, it is shown in the first figure. And uh, the gate extends beyond the channel and sits on a thick oxide, this one Fox, on the side of the drain region in order to increase the breakdown voltage of the oxide. This transistor is used as an inverter, as shown in the second figure. This one is for the linear micromotor and this one is for the rotary micromotor. And it is placed as an intermediate stage between each phase of the control circuit and uh, the fixed electrodes of micromotors. And then I will give you my results. Uh, simulations were performed in ORCAD PS5 to test the performance of the design control circuits of both linear and rotary micromotors. And in this case, the oscillator circuit showed in, in, this, in the first figure is simulating using a capacitor of 10 picofarads and a variable resistor. The signals that were obtained are in the second figure, and it is observed that the, the oscillator has a good uh, behavior for a wide range of frequencies, and this will allow to test the mechanical structure in different frequencies. And now uh, figures show control circuit signal simulated of both micromotors, and it can be seen that when clear signal changes, its state to low, then all the phases are initialized, as we can see here in the for for rotary micromotor and for linear micromotor in this case. And um, the X signal is used to decide which of the two directions will be active. Um, for rotary micromotor is clockwise or counterclockwise, and for linear micromotor is backward or forward. And then uh, the topological design was made in LED software under the rules of on semi technology of 0.5 micrometers. And in the figure, we can see um, the complete design of the linear micromotor with its control circuit, the elevation voltage, the mechanical structure, and the sensor. And in this figure, it can be seen the complete design of the rotary micromotor, also with the respective uh, control circuit, the elevation voltage, sensor, and the mechanical structure. And in this one, it can be seen the chip with both uh, linear and rotary micromotors with the respective control circuit and sensors. 
and also with all the input output pins. Finally, uh, the conclusions. The conclusions are that based on the reviewed micromotor literature, this work is the first to integrate two different types of micromotors, linear and rotary within a single chip. Another advantage of this work is that it is considered a low voltage system since it operates with voltages from 0 to 20 volts. On the other hand, despite the existence of works that integrate the micromotor, its control circuit and the elevation voltage stage, <coughs> this work is the first to integrate position and speed sensors within the same chip based on 0.5 micron CMOS technology of on semiconductor and FGMOS. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, so we're going to start with the questions. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Okay. Okay, uh, Andrea, Andrea, could you tell, tell us what is the difference, difference between designing a liner motor and a and a rotor? I I mean, which is the difference when you are trying a linear movement or a rotatory movement? Um, in the case of the linear micromotor. Uh, we need to take into consideration that the force that we need to to apply is uh, it must be equal to the force uh, needed to move the the springs. And in the case of the um, rotary micromotor, the force that it is important to take into consideration is uh, the friction between the rotor and the base. OK, uh, uh, in this and in this case, in the rotatory micromotor, uh, how you get the friction in this model? Um, uh, it depends. In this case, it's uh, it was taken into consideration the material of the of the rotor, and uh, also the the material, also the the area of uh, contact between both uh, elements, uh -huh. also the weight of the rotor. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, we have any question? Uh, Andrea, do you want to comment uh, anything else about your work? Mm. Uh, it, it con I consider that uh, it's a, a really good work because we have um, the opportunity to make uh, another op applications to make applications of these type of systems, and as we uh, as we can learn during the the development of the work. There is some of the applications that, that can be in miniaturized robotics and other devices uh, such as micro pistons or like electro valves. And for example, it can be used in medical in instruments such as micro valve control or fiber optic uh, micro, mirror, micro mirrors. And yeah, 
we can have a lot of applications of this type of systems if we can if we continue with this work and yeah i think it's it's a it's a good uh, um, part of this work that we can continue with this uh, development um that's all yeah, I, I think it's a, a pass uh, for doing micro mechatronics. No, uh, in in that case, uh, having a micro motor and sensors and all all that that kind of things. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, Thank you. So we are going to continue with the program, and now we have uh, the work of Carlos Sanabria. Uh, Monica Linares Aranda and Rogelio Higuera Gonzalez. Uh, they are going to present us uh, the work uh, with the title Analysis of uh, Analysis of on Silicon Bias for an Advanced RF CMOS Process, Experimental Characterization and Modeling. Uh, be welcome, uh, Carlos. Uh, We're going to, to listen to your presentation. Uh, could you probe your microphone? Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. And so, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so welcome and go ahead. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to present the work, uh, Analysis on Silicon Bias for Advanced Arts F uh, CMOS Process, Experimental Characterization and Modeling. My name is Carlos Anabria. And this work was made in uh, with the Dr. Monica Linares uh, from the uh, Institución Nacional de Astrofísica, Óptica y Electrónica. Uh, this is the, uh, the content of the following slide, beginning with a brief introduction, the statement of the problem, uh, presented the design of fabricated prototype, uh, the characterization and modeling that we are proposing for the silicon bias, uh, the analysis uh, of the result and the respective conclusions. So, uh, with the technological advance, uh, the operation frequency at the density of the integral circuit has increased with the past of the years. Uh, uh, this has allowed us to have a larger number of active devices per area, uh, increasing the feature that we can have in uh, integrated circuit. However, uh, with the increase of the number of active devices, also we need a longer and a major number of interconnections to fulfill the requirement of connectivity of the uh, integrated circuit. Uh, to deal with this issue, the new technologies add a uh, new uh, metallic layers, uh, which uh, are generally used for the global interconnections. So uh, is the, this metallic layer had a different geometry, like uh, a large uh, transversal area uh, to uh, reduce the uh, um, the lo re resistance losses uh, for the larger uh, net, like the cloud uh, distribution networks. However, at the same time, this increase the geometrical discontinuity uh, in the vertical interconnection building with the silicon bias, and this will be uh, affect the electrical behavior of this interconnection. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the vertical interconnection uh, are uh, parasitic elements in our uh, designs uh, from uh, in low frequency uh, these uh, interconnections are generally uh, uh, generally model at uh, resist uh, resistive losses and we can deal with uh, this parasitic by adding uh, a large number of uh, on silicon bears in a defined area to the point that we even can consider uh, in some cases transparent for our design but with the increase of the frequency, the electrical behavior that will be dominant in the impedance of the, uh, the vertical interconnections will be the impedance and the capacitive element. This is really more relevant for RF application or radio frequency application in which we are uh, operating in the range of the gigahertz. Uh, this uh, will be uh, especially uh, Notorious in uh, the resonant oscillators. For example, 
Uh, in this case, uh, we are presenting the rotary travel wave oscillator. This is a very attractive topology for signal processing uh, a, a baseband uh, and baseband, and uh, because it has a signal generation in the gigahertz range. Uh, uh, he has a low power consumption. Uh, this resonator is built with a uh, transmission lines, a differential pair that uh, operates in a, an adiabatical model, has a lower skew, low jitter, low phase noise, and it, his design is simple in comparison with uh, a H3 uh, cloud network distribution. Uh, since the, the technology can increase the requirement for the oscillator, we need to uh, take in consideration that we want a, a higher operation frequency, maintaining the uh, requirement for signal integrity. For example, in the resonant oscillators, uh, the operation frequency is uh, in function of the inductive and capacitive uh, distributed uh, behavior of the resonator. So, it will be very uh, sensitive to change on the geometry, and this, in the end, will be affect the frequency operation and the signal integrity of the uh, generated signal. In this case, uh, for the uh, RTWO, the rotary travel wave oscillator, the resonator is located generally in the top metal layers due to the low, uh, low resistive losses. And here compensation stay uh, cross coupled and inverter pair are at the silicon level. So the generated signal we need to travel from the top of the technological node of the CMOS process to the bottom through a vertical state connection. This will be a geometrical discontinuity for the generated signal that will be affect uh, the, the signal integrity and the frequency of the of the, this type of application. So Taking this into consideration, uh, in this work, uh, we decide to uh, modeling the in, inductant and capacitive behavior of this interconnection, of the vertical interconnection with, with silicon bias, uh, in a higher frequency range. For this, uh, we also want to make a experimental characterization of our models, if, and for this, we uh, design a prototype. This is a communication channel uh, that you see in this uh, in the slide. Uh, it's a like this chain structure where the input signal will be traveled from the top metal layer, the global uh, interconnection, through uh, uh, the local interconnection in the bottom of the uh, of the CMOS process, the bottom layer of the CMOS process, and go back again to the top metal layers imitating the uh, connection between the globals and the local interconnection. In this case, uh, the prototype had two uh, uh, vertical interconnections, building wing of silicon bias. Uh, the first one we denominated the short bias stack uh, has a affected area or a determinate area of 3.2 micrometers by 20 micrometers. And the second uh, uh, inter in vertical interconnection, we denominated as Lombia stack, uh, has, is a, a vertical interconnection fully with uh, BS by, in an area of 20 micrometers by 20 micrometers. Uh, we decide uh, this geometry based on the result uh, on our previous work, where we performed full wave simulation in which we uh, construct a uh, we both, sorry, a 3D representation of the of the this uh, vertical interconnection, this communication channel, using the dimensions and the and the information of the material given by the manufacturer. I will simulate the traveling of the electromagnetic wave uh, using the three wheel simulator, and in this case, uh, we uh, perform this uh, simulation for uh, several uh, technological nodes. I am a marker here, the uh, uh, 118 nanometers uh, node, because it's the one that we uh, select for the design and manufacturing of the prototype. The result that we see in all the simulations for all the technological nodes is unlike a low frequency design, reduces the number or reducing the area 
uh, of the vertical interconnection will reduce the barrier or or RLC parameters, which means this, that we in a lower area, we are going to have a lower parasitic elements in higher frequencies. Uh, the selected uh, vertical interconnection for our device was the words and the uh, case that we found in this technological node that corresponds to uh, the worst case, uh, the 20 by 20 uh, vertical interconnection, and the, and the best case is the 3.2 by 20 micrometers uh, vertical interconnection. Now, this result can be see a little strange from the point of view of the uh, low frequency uh, design. However, as we mentioned before, once that the inductive and capacitive behavior become the predominant effect in the impedance of this uh, characteristic, we're going to uh, start to see a high uh, frequency effects. For example, uh, in our analysis for the current density of the vertical interconnection, we found that the proximity effects, uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, allocate the current in this vertical interconnection in the exterior uh, vias uh, of the uh, vertical interconnection. So adding more uh, area or more vias to this vertical interconnection, we don't decrease uh, uh, the parasit of these elements. It's, it's more, we are adding capacitance and inductance when we are using uh, this method to try to uh, lower the parasitic effects of this vertical interconnection at higher frequencies. Taking this in, in consideration, in this world, we don't only want to show you the effects of, uh, uh, through the simulation, but we also want to uh, propose a circuit model that can be used in uh, early stage of the design so we can uh, uh, use it uh, for the design of the highest speed, uh, for example, uh, resonant oscillators. So uh, our characterization and model methodology was the following. We made like um, the embedding methodology in which we uh, each part of the uh, communication channel was extracted at a circuit model. For example, in this case, I am show you the microfield at the straight line of the uh, of the communication channel, the daisy chain structure. We use manufacturing data, full waves, the uh, full way uh, uh, simulation to extract all the components in a range of frequency from 70 megahertz to 67 gigahertz. We select this random frequency due uh, this what they use in the experimental characterization of the prototype. Uh, in this case, the electrical uh, parameters, the resistance, uh, inductance, and capacitance were extracted from the scattering params. A relation between the measurement power and the input power or the electromagnetic signal that is in, uh, injected in our communication channel. The circuit model for our channel is the one that you can see in this, uh, uh, in this slide. This is the picture or, or, or the, or the, uh, <laughs> the design is uh, the design a uh, communication channel, the daisy chain structure web manufacturer and the UNC uh, on, uh, 118 nanometers mixed model uh, RF uh, CMOS process. Uh, this is the top view. Uh, as you can see in the traversal view, we can see the difference between the top metal layer and the internal metal layers in the thickness. And also we can see the structure, uh, the, the on silicon vias and the, uh, the structure of the vertical interconnection. So, uh, so uh, sorry, Carlos, we, we have two minutes more for finish the presentation. Okay, I just had to slide more, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
Uh, taking in consideration uh, the circuit model, uh, you can see that we, for example, uh, modeling the the me measurement path uh, with the data by the manufacturer. The street lines, uh, the, the micro street and, and the street line was extracted for full way simulations of the 3D representations. And finally, using these models with the measurement data, we will be able to uh, extract the circuit model for uh, the vertical interconnection in this channel and also the uh, losses that we had in the field outset. As we can see, uh, the, uh, the models represent what we had in the previous result, just that a true as ele electrical circuit. The Shorbia stat with a lower uh, connection area has a lower uh, uh, values for the electrical parameter that the uh, long via stat. And in the comparison between the, the circuit model, the measurement of the full wave simulation, we can have a precision of the 5% in, for example, the S parameter T1 that is the transmission losses of the channel. So in conclusion, in the present world, a communication channel with vertical uh, trans uh, with vertical transmission were modeled by using a symmetrical daisy chain structure that was manufactured in the 118 uh, CMOS uh, RF process. The maximum average error that had the circuit model with the experimental data uh, was below the 5% for the return losses when it's compared to uh, the, the full way simulation and the data that was measured with were for, from the daisy channel structure. The experimental data show that the vertical transmission in the Faraday communication channel uh, have a uh, element, uh, parasite element that the predominant behavior are the inductive a capacity, especially in high frequency. Different to in low frequency where this element will be more uh, res uh, associated with resistor losses. So uh, the low uh, frequency design technique for dealing with the low resistance losses, it will not reduce the, the parasitic behavior in high frequency. Also, we in almost increase it. Uh, it was observed that the effect of the, the technological uh, scaling introduced uh, also uh, higher losses in the field outset in the dielectrical or the simulation, and this uh, increased the complexity of the of the vertical interconnection of the silicon via stat. Uh, and finally, we can assume, uh, based on the result, that in newer technologies or in higher operation frequency with more limited layers, uh, this effect will be greater in the application. So, thank you uh, for your attendance. Uh, so, to... Thank you very much, Carlos. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well, if you have any question, you can raise your hand. Okay, Carlos, I, I think that there are no questions, so okay. uh, you can comment anything else about your your work. I think that it's a very interesting work. Okay, uh, well, one of the proposals of this work is to have this uh, electrical circuit model that is in function of the frequency due uh, these parasitic behaviors will be affect the signal integrity in, for example, cloud distribution network. Uh, just uh, as a comment, uh, if we can see here, uh, we uh, have a longer, uh, bigger losses when the frequency of the signal is higher. Now, it is in consideration in a cloud signal, not only the fundamental frequency is the important. 
we also need to consider the harmonics. And we are going to have a different attenuation for the harmonics and the fundamental signal, which this means that we are going to uh, affecting the rise and the falls time in a circuit that we design. We in, and in the end we are uh, can be uh, be out of the spec for a, a set of time or whole time having the correct uh, fundamental frequency. So it's this is uh, in this world we want to uh, model this uh, uh, the electrical behavior, especially the inductive and the capacitive behavior or the vertical interconnection, so we can uh, take in consideration the this like a filtering effect that we will be having in the harmonics for example cloud signal in the giga frequency range. Yeah, uh, we we have uh, always the same uh, uh, problem no? with the frequency. We have uh, different behaviors in all the devices. So uh, thank you very much, Carlos. Thanks uh, to you. Thanks to all the attendants. Thank you. Uh, we are going to continue uh, with the program. Uh, so now we have uh, Ferhati and Jifal. Uh, with the work uh, genetic algorithm based approach to enhance the performance of gate engineering UV thin field phototransistor. Uh, be welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, could you uh, put your presentation, please? Yes. Thank you very much. Now uh, we can see your presentation and we can hear you very well. Um, Thank you. Okay, um, go ahead. Thank you. So I am Farhati Hisham. I am a PhD student. Okay, uh, I think we have a problem with your audio. Uh, if you if you want, you can uh, put out your camera uh, so we can hear you better. Maybe he lost connection. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, we can wait or... Yes, we can wait uh, and that's up to you. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, we have uh, Farhati again. He's connecting his computer. Oh no, yeah, he lost the connection again. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, excuse You're me. You're welcome Please. again. Thank you. Okay, uh, so go ahead. We can hear you. Yes. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you, we can hear you. So the presentation outline are uh, described as follows. Uh, so uh, uh, first we begin with an introduction describing the, uh, the importance of the thin film technology. Secondly, we describe the device structure and the modeling methodology. Uh, and the, last, uh, the, the resultant discussion are provided in the third section. And finally, we conclude with some remarks and future perspectives. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. If you uh, prefer, you can enable your camera so we can have a better connection. With yes. Your voice. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So. So, it can be seen from this figure that uh, the evolution of the transistor during the last few years have gained a great deal of attention. Uh, I'm so sorry, but we, we can see your presentation. We only can see uh, your face. Yes. Yeah, there, there is your presentation. Thank you. Is it clear? Yes, it is. We can see your presentation and we can hear you. Thank you. So, several structures were proposed, such as multi-gate transistors, uh, graphene and uh, 3.5 materials and germanium materials-based transistors, and the thin film, thin film uh, technology. Uh, the latter is, uh, is uh, highly suitable due to its uh, uh, high performance, such as uh, low fabrication cost and the low power consumption. So, uh, optical communication systems are divided into three main st stages. For the first one is the optical source, the second one is the transmitter, and the last one is the uh, photoreceiver. So, <clears throat> the proposed structure is uh, based on AGZO channel with gate engineering aspect where two Gate uh, two gate uh, two gates are uh, are 
are uh, are included in our device. The first one is near the source uh, region, and the th uh, the second one is in near the drain uh, side. This can can enhance the device performance by getting rid of the power budget, suppressing wire capacitance, and offering the CMOS compatibility and offering also the receiverless technology. The, the aim of this work is uh, to propose a new phototransistor design for optical communication systems. Uh, the second, uh, the second uh, objective of this work is to evaluate the performance of the proposed phototransistor with respect to the conventional photodetector structures and oh, the... So, sorry, sorry for interrupting again, but we can see your presentation again. No? Yeah, yeah, we can see you again. Thank you. We can see uh, now, so if you want yes. to continue. Yes, thank you. So this figure shows the proposed EGZO uh, UV phototransistor based on uh, EGZO uh, channel. The and and uh, gate engineering aspect. The main idea behind the proposed UV photonistor resides on combining EGZO thin film transistor with gate engineering aspect. The dual gate paradigm will modulate the channel electrostatic behavior, which can in turn enhance the photogenation separation mechanisms of electron hole pairs of the photogenated electron hole pairs. So for the modeling frameworks. Uh, several undesired effects uh, can be induced when considering the gate engineering aspects, such as quantum confinement effects. The amorphous state of the EGZO, uh, to, uh, EGZO can also uh, can also make the make the analytical model uh, extremely complex. So numerical simulations are basic frameworks are needed to better model the, the performance of the EGZO and to be close to the uh, realistic behavior of the device. Accordingly, the device is modeled by Silvaco software in which the diff diffusion model and finite difference time domain method are considered. The, this figure shows the, uh, the transfer curves associated with the, uh, the conventional design without gate engineering aspect. Uh, which means with single gate and the and the uh, and the proposed one based on uh, dual gate engineering aspect dual, uh, dual gate engineering aspect and the uv illumination and dark conditions it can be seen from this figure that the mercury agrees well with the experimental data the data thus proving the effectiveness of the proposed model uh, it can be seen also from this figure that the proposed uh, phototransistor exhibits exhibits uh, a high photoresponse, uh, where a high photocurrent of eight microamperes is recorded. The device demonstrates a very low dark current due to the use of TFT-based platform. Moreover, the threshold voltage. It can be seen from this figure that the threshold voltage, uh, a high shift uh, of the threshold voltage, is achieved, which enables enhancing the uh, photocurrent and enlarge the, opti uh, the operating voltage window. This figure shows the 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 e on e off ratio as a function of the gate voltage for different designs with uh, with the uh, gate engineering aspects configurations. The device current ratio is improved after introducing gate engineering aspect. Uh, where a high uh, current ratio of uh, 124 decibel is uh, achieved. The maximum the, the maximum current ratio is achieved around uh, an applied gate voltage of zero volt, indicating its low power consumption. This figure demonstrates also the complex behavior 
of the photo can where we can notice that uh, uh, the severe combination of the gate mater material engineering are introduced and we can we can see the complex behavior uh, when uh, when inserting uh, dual gate material aspect this complex behavior inspires the introduction of genetic algorithm based approach to select the upper prey design yielding the highest performances in this sense uh, we have introduced the genetic algorithm based approach uh, which is given by the following flow chart uh, the proposed uh, genetic algorithm approach uh, is implemented uh, to enhance the device performance so we suggest the implementation of the global optimization approach <coughs> to maximize the absorbance and uv spectral range it has demonstrated its usefulness to deal with extensive optimization problem in several fields. Moreover, genetic algorithm is a naturally inspired uh, iterative global research, research uh, technique imitating the evaluation process by executing specific genetic operating operators, including selection, crossover, and mutation. The solution is evaluated by defining a fitness function relative to the optimization problem. In our case, the fitness function is uh, given in the following equation where the absorbance in the UV range and the photo current are maximized, should be maximized. The fitness function as a uh, versus the generation number is given in this figure where we can notice that an excellent stabilization is reached at, uh, 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 I'm so sorry uh, for Hadi, but we keep seeing the slide number six. Um, maybe you are talking about a slide uh, different. Number twelve. Yeah, we 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 are seeing the number six. Yes. Is it clear now? Yeah, it is clear and we are seeing the slide number seven. Seven or twelve? We are seeing the seventh. We have the figure one, the proposed photo TFT based on G capital layer. Uh, there's a technical problem, I don't know. No. And now? And now, um, it is loading. Slide 12. No. We can't see anything. We only see a black uh, slide. It's loading. Just yeah. wait a minute. And no? No. I don't know what is the problem. And no? 
Uh, I suppose it is loading. No, no, we we can see your presentation. Uh, two minutes ago, uh, we can see your presentation, but we can only see the uh, slide number six. Uh, maybe in that way that you can show us your presentation in the same I will way. Do the, my, yeah, I will do the, now, the, my presentation. Yeah, now we can see. Uh, OK. Now. Now. You can see my presentation. No, I think it is loading. Should I re reconnect again? Okay. Yeah, we, we can see you again. Um, I think your presentation is loading. Yeah, we can see your presentation. We can see the slide number 12. So uh, yes. So, so I was talking about about uh, the stabilization of the fitness function as a, uh, with respect to the generation number of the genetic algorithm approach which is uh, given by figure four, as it is shown in this figure. So an excellent stabilization is reached at uh, the generation number of 500, thus inferring the successful minimization of the objective function and thereby the maximi maximization of the absorbance and the photo current. Uh, so the optimized design parameter vector at the, of the investigated photo TFT based on material gate engineering is given by uh, the vector X, where 4.6 electron volt of the first gate work function and 4.95 electron volt uh, were, were, were achieved. So, so the, the device figure for, of merits are given uh, of, the, of, the, of the optimized design compared to the conventional structures based on 
uh, MSM structure uh, structures are given in this table in which we can notice that the uh, that uh, the, the 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 optimized design outperforms greatly uh, the conventional ones in terms of uh, the current ratio responsivity and detectivity viewer of merits. So for the conclusion in this work, a new UV phototransistor based on EGZO thin film platform with gate engineering aspect is proposed and numerically investigated. Atlas two dimension simulator is used to accurately model the photoelectrical behavior of the proposed device. Thereafter, genetic algorithm metaheuristic approach is uh, implemented to optimize the device performance, where uh, it is revealed that the, the proposed device uh, exhibits an excellent photoresponse characteristics, making it highly suitable for optical wireless communication systems and environmental monitoring applications. For the future works, the present work can be extended by introducing plasmonic effect to further enhance the device UV photoresponse, uh, more importantly, capping the device with efficient sensitive layers uh, such as Z ZNO or uh, <coughs> ZNMGO uh, can be used to extend the sensing range to the visible and infrared spectral bands. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And happy. excuse me for the technical problem. Uh, I don't know what's uh, exactly the problem. Yeah, it, it's okay. Uh, sometimes uh, it is like this, so don't worry. Um, so if you have any question for, for Hadi, you can raise your hand. Okay, I, I think there is no question. So, uh, do you want to comment us something else, something additional? I think your work is very interesting. Um, do you want to comment us anything else? Yes. Um, uh, uh, this work is mainly, mainly uh, uh, focus it on two investigation frameworks. The first one is related to the introduction of gate material engineering to enhance the performance, the photosensing performances of uh, a phototransistor based on thin film technology. Uh, the second one is related to the implementation of a uh, metaheuristic technique based on genetic algorithm approach to achieve the highest possible performances of the device where uh, 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 where it is uh, it is seen that uh, uh, a high performance device can be reached by implementing this technique thank you uh, so I, I I think this is the the last presentation so we appreciate your assistance for uh, this conference, um, I think that with we are finishing. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. That's all. Okay, um, perhaps if you uh, take out your presentation in the first plane, please. My presentation? Yeah. Your presentation is still in the first plane. In the Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think it's time for the break.
them, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So thank you very much.